day 14 of the Alec Murdoch murder trial and the prosecution still presenting witnesses about the alleged financial crimes committed by Alec Murdoch. There were several interesting moments in court this afternoon when the defense tried to get testimony thrown out of court. Raphael James, Blair Sable and Michael Higdon joining us now from Walterboro. We'll start with Roth. Roth, I understand we now have some kind of a rough timeline as to how long this trial may last. R rough being the operative word and the defense after the jury was dismissed for the day, the um, defense pressed the judge to find out from the prosecution when he thought they might be wrapping up this case. After a little while, the prosecution offered perhaps the middle of next week. The defense said they needed to know that because they have witnesses of their own that they're calling in from all over the country. The defense then added that they expect their portion of the case, their presentation, to take about a week. So if my math is right, with that information, we can maybe expect this case to wrap up by February 22nd. Now, as you mentioned, lots of things going on in court today. We heard lots of objections from Dick Carputlian and the defense team. Uh, and it was a pretty odd development involving a GoFundMe case. Blair Sable is standing by with why they did not want some testimony admitted. Well, Roth, defense attorneys have jumped on any opportunity to dismiss witnesses, especially these ones uh, testifying about financial crimes that Alec Murdoch may have committed. Now, this latest time, they wanted to dismiss attorney Mark Tinsley for donating to a GoFundMe page. Now, it wasn't just any GoFundMe. It was the account for Shelly Smith. Uh, that's the Murdoch family's former caretaker who saw Alec Murdoch the night of the murders. She testified earlier this week. Her family says she's had to take a step back from work because testifying against her former boss was a taxing experience. Well, Tinsley, who represents the Mallory Beach family, donated to the cause as confirmed by the attorney general's office. And Phil Barber on the defense team said this was improper, but when he was making that objection, he couldn't find any legal reason to prevent him from talking. Here's what Judge Clifton knew had to say. I'm not going to strike his testimony. You, uh, it may be good fodder for cross-examination. Yes, sir. Well, Tinsley, he did take the stand shortly thereafter, and we're expecting to hear more from him tomorrow. And earlier today, we heard of more from another key witness in this case, Chris Wilson. He was Alec Murdoch's best friend, and they go way back. They were roommates in college. Uh, their wives were close friends. He says that their kids grew up together. Now, Wilson testified today that he loaned Alec Murdoch money, who promised to pay him back, and he never did. Roth? All right, Blair, thank you very much. This trial is the biggest thing in town right now. There are lots of people coming by the courthouse right now, some of them taking pictures uh, with the media behind them. But more people are coming to sit inside of the courtroom. We've talked to people from as far away as Florida. Michael Higdon uh, is in the courtroom, and she's there every morning as people try to find a way to get inside of the courtroom. How many people, Michael, are trying to do that every day? Roth, each media outlet is guaranteed a seat inside. There are other rows taken up by attorneys and those with a solicitor's office, but the rest of the courtroom is pretty much fair game for everyday people who are wanting to see this trial in person. I will say today is the fullest that I have seen it so far with between 120 and 150 people lining those benches. And I will tell you, it started early this morning. I'm told that around 530 is when people started lining up outside trying to get inside the courtroom. People traveling from Lancaster County, Lexington County, Mount Pleasant, and more. Yesterday, after the bomb threat, people were racing to try and get back into the building. When Alex has been brought in each day, everyone is craning their necks to see him and whispering among themselves, including the family. Almost like people are viewing this trial as a show, not necessarily someone who is charged with double murder. Well, today, I also feel like the audience was more lively than we've seen. Some moments even brought out some laughs from the audience, attorneys, the judge, and even the jury one factual issue. The Attorney General has... Of course, I asked, is there anything else, but go ahead. I apologize, Your Honor. I'm trying to hurry, if I can, because, uh, you yes, know, sir. there may be an ending to this case someday. You got the money. Did he? Did you threaten him in any way? No. Okay. Come on. 
Thank you. I have no further questions. <laughs> Balance in his account again, please. A negative $347,784.67. What is that right there? Overdraft charge. How much is the overdraft charge? $5. $5. Well, I spoke with several people today who say that they were uh, waiting actually here trying to see Curtis Eddie Smith, uh, but we are told that he could be taking the stand possibly tomorrow, but more likely sometime next week. Reporting live in Colleton County, I'm Michael Higdon. Roth, back to you. All right, again, Mark Tinsley was the last testimony that the jury heard for today. Should be interesting when the defense gets an opportunity to cross-examine him in the morning. And we're wondering if this GoFundMe will come up in cross-examination. From Colleton County, I'm Raphael James. Back to you. All right, Roth, never a dull moment in that trial. And remember, you can follow the trial in real time through our live blog. Our digital journalist, Stephen Artery, providing the latest updates each day of the trial for you. You can find that blog by going to live5news.com and clicking on live blog.